So hello everyone and welcome. I finally made it to 1000 subscribers so it is time to go back and revisit one of my most important videos that I ever made where I talk about all of the different characters, abilities and how they all stack up against each other. Now I do need to make some rules first before we go into this and the first rule is I'm only going to rank the abilities and not the character. That means we might see some characters that are veterans, that are extremely experienced and pretty awesome in what they do but the ability that they were born with basically is not actually that great. We will also see some characters who maybe are not that great, who are pretty much new to the uh, entire thing of being a magical girl, but because they have an amazing ability, they might still rank really high. So once again, we're only ranking the ability and not the actual character. Next up, we're not going to compare the weapons. So each magical girl has a set of weapons that they can use, that they can summon at any point, like Yachio's spears, for example, or Mami's guns. Every single character can summon weapons. That's not a specifically special power that only some characters have. And because every single character can summon their weapons, I'm not going to mark that as a special ability, so we're not just we're not going to look at the weapons at all. Then I'm going to rank all of these different abilities by special criteria, and the criteria are I'm going to rank them on one hand on the combat use against other magical girls. How how awesome would those powers be if you were fighting against other magical girls one or multiple at a time even then how awesome are they in a combat against other witches or uwasa or in general monsters um, as i would call them how awesome are they out of combat for utility for things like information gathering circumventing fights general utility or just everyday life whatever you want to do in your life how awesome is are the powers for that and also as a criteria how unique is it? Because there's a whole bunch of magic that can be learned uh, by other magical girls and if it's a power that can be learned by someone else it's gonna rank a lot lower on the list. So those are most of the uh, criteria. I guess also one of the criteria is if it's a magic type that is only specifically useful in one specific situation while you have another power that is useful in a lot more situation it's better if it's useful for more situations. With all of that out of the way, I think we can finally start the ranking and we're going to start by ranking uh, Alina right here. Also something to note is we're going to rank all characters that are playable on the North American server using information from the North American server at this time at the end of arc 1. So Alina um, is a character whose ability is the ability to create pocket dimensions and she can create barriers also around um, basically anything that she wants as well. So she can create pocket dimension and she can create barriers around locations. Um, the ability to be able to just create a pocket dimension, hide in the pocket dimension or stuff other things into pocket dimensions as well. Take them out later at any point you want while also being able to create pretty ginormous barriers. That is indeed a power that is extremely powerful and I'm going to put it right there into S rank because the powerful that is amazing as other magical girls. If other magical girls are too strong, you hide in a barrier. If it's possible, you stick them in barriers. You can pull stuff out of barriers that fights for you like a witch for example. That's amazing as well. She also has this power, I guess it's more pronounced in the anime, that you can kind of control witches. That's not really something I'm going to put right in here because it's not some power that she like canonically has in the game, more so the anime and I'm going to stick to the game mostly. Um, also, it's a power that's more so a thing of her doppel, and I'm not going to rate doppels as well. I guess I should have mentioned that we're going, not going to rate doppels, we're going to rate the regular ability that characters have. If you fight against witches uh, with this ability that Aina has, she can just stick entire witches into barriers so she doesn't even have to fight if she doesn't want to. Um, outside of combat, you can use that to hide from enemies, for example, just put that in there. You can lock enemies away uh, so you don't even have to fight them and then they're just stuck in some area for a really long time. There's a lot of things you can do and it's also rather unique in that no one else really has anything uh, similar to this, which makes it really amazing. I do need to mention one thing about the broken category up there. The broken category is reserved for abilities that are so incredibly powerful that if you are that if anyone from these lower ranks is faced with a broken character, the broken character will win before the other character has a chance to do anything. And that's what broken really means in that broken might as well be might as well say enemy has no chance. Uh, but I'm going to leave it as broken because it's a uh, 
it's a shorter word. Also, I'm going to have the unranked category down there, which basically just means it's something that I'm not willing to put into any of these other categories, but we'll get to that in a bit, probably at some point. Then we have the knees who have a very similar power. I'm going to rank them right here. The power that the knees have is that they can create sound waves that are so powerful that enemies are basically cringing in pain. I know the word cringe is basically being used for other stuff, but did you know that cringe can also be used for not things that you see on the internet that make you cringe, but also when you like cringe in pain or something like that? So they can create sound waves that are really powerful and can incapacitate opponents. Um, however, it is limited to only a handful of opponents and they need to be able to actually play their instruments and also if they're loud sounds, it doesn't work. Um, it kind of depends on the location, like it needs to be a location where sound waves um, don't get scattered too much. Um, they're also very vulnerable to anyone else while they're playing their instruments. So there's a lot of downsides to it, but the ability to incapacitate someone or something, because it also works against witches, is really, really strong because you only need to incapacitate them and any other character who is nearby will have an easy victory. So this works amazingly well against other, uh, other magic girls, against other witches. Outside of combat, I guess they can still play an instrument to make some music, I guess. And that's basically that. So overall, it has some strong points, but also some glaring weaknesses, why B is the highest that I can give it for now. We then move on to a Mifuyu. Mifuyu has the ability to create illusions. And this is some a, a power that is rather weird to actually put into words exactly what it can and cannot do, because this is, another, is one of those powers, and we're gonna see a lot of these powers that really just depend on what the writer says it can do. The writer might say, oh, she can create an illusion that will make every single enemy on the entire field believe they've died and then they fall over dead and turn into witches or something like that. Like, you can create some really weird situations where the writer just says, ah, it can work like that. Um, but at the same time, you could also have the writer say, oh no, the enemy is able to see through the illusion because they're just powerful enough to do that. And p p powers that pretty much just depend on what the writer says it can do or cannot do, I really am not a big fan of. But just in general, the idea of creating false reality in some way, shape or form is pretty awesome, but it often comes down to the enemy being able to overpower that in some way, unless you are able to not just show someone something that is wrong, but also additionally influence someone else's brain. That is a lot more important when it comes to tricking someone because if, like I said, if someone has a really strong magical ability and you just show them something that's wrong, like an illusion, they might be able to see through it. But if you directly interact with their brain uh, and like change their mind, basically like mind control, they would not be able to overpower that at all. Um, so this is one of the reasons why I put it only in A rank is that, yeah, it could probably be overpowered and also because now we just don't know that much about it. Also, it, it can do some things for utility, but it's really hard to put into words exactly what. So it's one of those uh, powers that are a bit wishy-washy and so um, it's I'm not really comfortable putting it into too many other uh, tiers. Also something to note is if you see a character that I put in any one of these rankings and you say to yourself, this character should be like two or three higher or two or three lower, yeah, you can, you can do that. You're totally fine to have your own opinions. That's nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, this, this is not like the list. It's more so to engage with you guys and show you guys all these different abilities and how I think they stack up against each other. Moving on, we have Sakuraku who has absolutely no ability whatsoever. Um, yeah. There's going to be other characters who have abilities that are still going to be in D rank just because I didn't want to make another rank that just says has no ability and then it just has Sakurako in it. So there's going to be other characters in that ranking just that every single other character would be higher than Sakurako because she has literally no ability whatsoever. I mean, she, can, she only has restrictions. She has restrictions to her powers, but apart from that, she has no actual ability. Then we have Himika, who is able to um, throw a coin, and then you are forced to look at the coin and be distracted for a moment. Distracting someone for a, mo for a brief moment is okay, I guess. First off, it mostly useless for utility. I mean, unless you want to steal shit, um, then I guess it might be fine to just put your hand on something you want to steal and then throw the coin be like look there and then quickly grab it and run out the store before someone can catch up to you 
yeah, okay, if you want to do that, I guess it's a really cool power to have. But more so about combat, the thing, it, it can give you a bit of an edge in combat, but only like a bit of an edge. It is an edge that can, in very specific situations, be rather useful. But the way it seems her power works is that it's really just a very quick flash of a distraction that it creates. And as such, I don't think it's going to be too powerful in most situations. Moving on, I think no one can disagree if I put her in D-rank because Homona has absolutely terrible powers that are definitely broken. So time manipulation, I've said this in the other video as well, um, being able to manipulate time, space and reality, any of these three, or a combination of any of these three even, to any really high degree, like a really high degree, is absolutely broken. Alina almost gets there, um, but Alina's power is is not really aggressive in that sense when she just creates a pocket dimension. She can't immediately kill someone by creating a pocket dimension. That's not how that works. But when you look at something like being able to reverse time and more importantly being able to stop time, if any single other character who is on there just gets paired up against something like time stop, unless they get to like prepare, like, people are going to be like, oh, but mommy, what, what if mommy's there and she prepares against that? We're not counting being able to prepare against an opponent that doesn't know you're preparing against them. That's not really a fair fight, is it? Also, most importantly, we're not really talking about fair fights in general. We're just talking about what can this power do uh, against other people, against witches, for utility, how unique is it, all of these criteria. This is this is not about one character fighting another. I'm just saying that Homelander would win all the fair fights. But in general, being able to stop time means your opponent instantly loses as soon as you stop time. A witch can't do anything, instantly loses. You have, you have some witches like... I guess one or maybe two if you count Dawn of High Days as well, uh, but Purgesnacht kind of witches that are somehow like immune to uh, Homura's damage. It's really weird why um, Homura is unable to damage while Purgesnacht because we still don't have a canon reason why Homura was not able to damage while Purgesnacht. Some people have said, oh, it's probably because while Purgesnacht cannot take damage from like conventional weapons. It needs to be magic weapons and something like that. Like people come up with reasons why. Um, but that aside, that's more that's more of a unique part of while Purgesnacht, not really a part of Homura's magic. Just in general, Time Stop is just one of the most absolutely broken powers you can possibly ever have in any scenario whatsoever against other characters, against monsters, in utility situations. You can... All of the things that I've mentioned earlier, gathering information, running away, avoiding fights, just general everyday life, Time Stop will be overpowered in all of these situations and there's nothing anyone else can do about that. And there's also a very important thing, it just doesn't have counters to it. Like, you, the only way to counter a power like this is if you know the very specific weakness that it has and the ability to exploit it. And having both of that is just not something that is realistic if a character like Homura or just any character that had this ability wanted you dead. It's like not realistic that you would be able to find that out and then counter it. And other people bring out, oh, but in Jojo, characters have time stop and they're not overpowered. Yeah, but that's Jojo. Jojo works on completely different rules. And also, Dio was actually Dio was actually pretty fucking stupid. I'm, I'm gonna say like Dio was actually really, really, really stupid. What the fuck? So moving on, we have Makino Ikumi. Ikumi's power is one that I had to take a look at because uh, it's never actually brought up. But and I also need to bring this up at this point. There is there are two books, the Magia. What is it called? Magia Archive, I think it's called. Um, these are just two booklets that have just a list of, of many different characters and has some concept out of the characters and some information about them. Like I think it has their age, their height, blood type maybe, I don't know. Japanese people really like knowing blood type, I guess, uh, because they use it like, um, like horoscope or whatever. And it also has just a very quick description of their magic. So if there are some characters in here who haven't actually had their magic show up anywhere in the game, but their magic is in the Magia Archive, and I am permitting information that is from the Magia Archive, also because it's like dubious canonicity, um, but I'll allow it. So Ikumi's power is, according to Magia Archive, the ability to temporarily freeze enemies in place and making them unable to act. I think that's basically this. Whoops, that's not Ikumi. I think that's basically the same 
to some degree as the Nays. Uh, it is stronger, in my opinion, than the Nays because um, the Nays, like I said, had the downside of them having to actively play their instruments in order to have it happen. But on the other side, it seems like the Nays have more area of effect where Ikumi seems to be able to only do it against like one or two enemies, at least in the way it's worded, it's hard to say. So. I'm not going to do sub rankings. Like I know some people think that in a tier list like this, the more top left it is, like this would be more powerful than what is on the right. I don't really function with tiers lists like that. Um, all of characters in the same tier, in my opinion, are like really in the same tier. But if you really wanted to, you could say Ikumi's power is probably a tiny bit better because it seems like she can just do it and then keep fighting without having to repeatedly hold it up all the time. Um, yeah, but that's about that. Moving on with Kanai. What is Kanai's power? She has the ability to bypass defense and it's like armor ignore that you can imagine. This is another one of those abilities that is really, really difficult to actually put into any sort of tier because it extremely depends on what your opponent really is. If it's an opponent that doesn't have strong armor to begin with or strong defenses, then it's completely useless, but if it's an opponent that relies on that sort of on having heavy armor, it's extremely powerful. I would put it somewhere between C and D because it's so incredibly situational, but I will concede that in situations where it is useful to make an enemy's defense nullified, it would be extremely powerful, like absolutely extremely powerful. And it could work against both magic gods and against uh, witches, so I'm just barely putting it in C, but it's just slightly above D maybe. Moving on to Kana, eh, not Kane, and uh, moving on to uh, the next one, we have um, Kanagi. I had to quickly bring her up on the second page. Her power is, well, I thought she only had uh, being the ability to read my uh, mind, but as it turns out, she really does only have the ability to read someone's mind. So with that in mind, ha, get it? Kanagi's power is also really situational. First off, in the middle of a battle it's probably going to be rather bad because it seemed like Kanagi needs to be able to be in close range. Uh, she probably needs to incapacitate enemies first. At least it, the story made it seem that that is the way when we first see a Kanagi arrive. She also needs to be transformed to use it. This is also something, not every one of these characters needs to be transformed to use their magic, but some of these characters do. And Kanagi specifically makes a mention that she has to be transformed to use it. Uh, and because the enemy uh, or the other character has to be uh, in close range, it's really hard to, to use this reliably. However, out for utility, if you can just use this on anyone, um, it's really darn awesome to use. And it allows you to get information that otherwise no one else can possibly ever get. So as such, I will put it in B tier. Situational, has some really big drawbacks, but can do some amazing things. Moving on, we have Kirika, our everyone's favorite uh, lesbian emo goth uh, mass serial killer. Uh, what is Kirika's power? She actually has a pretty good power. I talked earlier about how broken powers are that have complete control over space, time, and reality. And she does actually have a time-based a, a power. However, it's only like, uh, it's not that big of a control over time as something like Homura has, which is completely stop time and even reverse it. All that Kirika does is she has a field around her, we don't know how big it is, where time slows down for everyone else. Meaning that if you see Kirika and you're around her, it will look to you like she's really, really fast. Like she's, he's su like she's some sort of um, ethnic priest or whatever who's really, really fast. Um, it, it, she, she might look like that um, and it makes it extremely difficult to fight against her unless you have plot armor. So unless you have plot armor, it's going to be extremely difficult to do something against this power. I don't think any witch or most other characters will be able to actually win against her. Um, she's still just fighting with a regular weapon, she has claws, but just being able to slow down time for everyone else is just that absurd. And there was even a point in her uh, Magical Girl story where she almost like uh, one v 2 against both Kyoko and Mami, which was Realistic, you can probably do that. So that is that is pretty darn powerful. 
Um, but she, like I said, she doesn't have complete control over time and that is why it's not quite enough for Broken Tear. Broken Tear, in my opinion, is like absolute complete control. Um, next up we have Kyoko and I'm going to uh, rate Kyoko based on her Shadow Clone ability and Shadow Clones are pretty darn awesome. You can say this is some sort of mixture between uh, space and reality powers, being able to create clones of yourself that are all able to fight as well as you do. That is pretty darn powerful. I don't think I need to talk too much about this. It's just really darn amazing to be able to do that. If you ever doubt the ability or how powerful an ability like this this is, just watch Naruto or something and you're going to see like how powerful it is because it's like everything that you need to win is just that. Next up we have Arisa. So we have spin-off characters. Spin-off characters are a bit weird sometimes because the information we have on them can be extremely limited. For example, both Arisa and Chizato, we have extremely limited information so we don't really get a good view on what their powers are. I did look them up and see if maybe the wiki or just other people have more information on what their powers could be. And for Arisa, the power that, that we found, that I found, was that it said she had the ability to reinforce her body. That sounds terrible. And then we had, I mean, because I, this is the first part where probably the uniqueness of a magic comes into question, because being able to make yourself a bit stronger is something that, like, every magical girl can, to, can do to some degree. Just maybe she can do it a bit better. Um, we, we know that every ca uh, every magic girl is able to learn magic like this because Homura used it to fix her eyesight. Uh, fixing eyesight, by the way, is not something that I would put into healing because your eye isn't like ripped apart or something, it's not cracked. You, it's, you're just changing the, you're literally changing the properties of your eye. That is body modification, so we know it is possible to learn that sort of power. Therefore, body reinforcement is something that, I don't, I don't know if that should really count as like being a good power if other people can just learn it, but to a lesser degree. I mean, even if it's to a lesser degree, just the fact that other people have it, I don't know. Also doesn't seem to do much. Next up we have, I mean, it didn't help her. <laughs> uh, next up we have Chisato. Her magic also didn't help her very well, did it? Uh, her ability is to cancel magical effects. She's the anti-mage. Um, it's hard to put something like this anywhere. This might be the first unranked character because this is the kind of character that really just depends on your opponent. And you can say, if she can cancel the magic of someone someone who's in broken tier, that would put her in broken tier. But if she used this against someone who's in D tier, it's terrible, it's useful, it does nothing, it's god awful. So as such, uh, and also it does nothing out of combat really. Uh, we don't even know if it would work against witches, I guess. Uh, I don't remember anything like that from a comic. I read the comic like three times over the course of like four years. Um, and I still remember what happened in Susan and Mamika because that comic is, is like a manga, right? Goes in one eye, comes out the other. I don't know. Um, I just know that everyone somehow dies. Uh, it's it's hard to rank this power, and this is one of those, and this is what the category unranked is for. It's just powers that I'm not really comfortable putting anywhere on here. You can say, oh, it's because it's so situational, it's D tier. But then again, you can also make the same argument for, oh, yeah, but like I said, if you can cancel broken, you can fetch more. We are moving on though to a Kaide. Kaide in the actual game, and every time we see her, she uses her magic to grow giant plants. She uses that in her magia, she uses that in the story segments that we see. But according to magia archive, that's not actually her power. Her power is the temporary deletion of obstacles. So apparently she has this spell, I think it's called Banish from Dungeons and Dragons, where you can take someone or something and like temporarily uh, banish it to another, rea another dimension. And then after a while it comes back. I guess that's kind of what she has. And this is one of those powers where I don't really know how to rank this. Instead, I'm just going to ignore that power and just go with what we see her actually do, which is summon giant plants. Um, this is one of those powers that it seems is able to be used for restraining someone, which is really awesome. It can be used for attacks, I guess, if you punch someone with a giant vine or whatever, it's really good. But even so, just punching someone with a giant vine um, is probably not that fast or effective than most other characters just using their normal weapons, I would say. As such, it's a power that has stronger capabilities than just using your normal weapon and does give you a definitive upgrade. Additionally to that, it can do some specific things like restraining someone, even really big things. Um, it can be used to give other people platforms and like make a giant ladder, for example. So it has some specific uses that you can use in specific situations, but overall it's not that exciting. Next up we have Kuro and some people I think pretty dear and just fucking Kuro. We don't know Kuro's power. 
We don't know. We, we, it's, it's, this one we literally cannot rank because we don't know what Curl's power actually was. Um, shout out to Kuro, by the way. Next up, we have Melissa de Vignoles. Uh, what is her power? Um, is, I had to look this up as well. I, I know that she uses her weapon to make stuff disappear, but I still wondered, does she actually have a specific power or is that part of her weapon? Because it could just be part of her weapon. As it turns out, that is supposed to actually be her power. So being able to temporarily delete stuff, it almost seems like she has a giant as the hand. Being able to just send stuff into... We could, you could say it sends stuff into altered realities, similarly to um, what Kaide would have with the power that it says in her ability. But I would still put it one higher, um, because like I said, I didn't actually rate Kaide based on that power. I rated her based on the being able to grow stuff. So we're going to rate Melissa based on the ability to delete stuff. The fact that it is close range and it seems tied to a weapon to some degree does knock this down quite a lot because just in general, if you could just snap your finger or swipe your hand or whatever and somewhere in the distance it would remove stuff immediately, that would be extreme, that would easily be S. Some might even argue broken. But the fact that you need to like do stuff in melee range to make that happen knocks it down quite a lot because a lot of other powers can just avoid that. Maybe there's other powers that make it so they don't get hit. There's other powers that may also make it so they don't get hit, but for different reasons. Also other powers that don't get hit for different reasons. Uh, also other powers that don't get hit for different reasons. All these powers out there have ways to not get hit by something like that or completely avoid it in other ways. And that's why um, powers that are based on being close to enemies can very easily be countered, sadly. Um, next up, moving on, we have a Momoko. Momoko has the ability to be bisexual. Also, apart from that, she has the ability to give other people courage. Um, buffing, how do we rate buffing? It's one of those abilities that uh, I keep saying it's one of those abilities because all these abilities are very special and they all are like having to be um, rated based on different uh, aspects. But buffing are abilities that depend very much on what it is you are making stronger. If you take a couple of pigeons and you buff them with courage, they're not gonna take down well, Purgesnacht. So it really just depends on what uh, her friends are, what her team are, where she is fighting. Is she leading a good team? Is she not leading a good team? I've gone, I'm going to... Uh, just say being able to make other characters a bit stronger is a pretty good ability, but it doesn't seem like it has that massive of an effect. It's similarly to someone just telling you, hey, you can do this, you're going to be stronger than you are right now, blah. So I would barely put it in C because if you use this on a really strong character, they could be extremely uh, more powerful after that. But in general, I would say this is a power that you could put in D rank, but I'm just going to just barely put it in C rank just because it has some potential to be really awesome on really good characters. Next up we have Rena, who is a character who I last time I think I put only in A, but this time I'm going to indeed put her in S. Um, Rena has the power to turn into other characters and from what we knew uh, up until the point where I made the last list um, is that we knew Rena can use the attacks of other characters, like she can use the weapons that other characters use and she takes on their type of magic, but we did not know if she can actually like fully use their magic. However, uh, with Kaide, uh, we see uh, at different points she turns into Kaide, like for what Pokemon, for example, and she actually uses Kaide's magic. So we can say now for certain, I already, by the way, I already knew this before when I made the other list, but I wanted to argue based solely on what we knew. There are other characters on here who I know a bunch of stuff from Arc 2, but I'm not gonna use that sort of information, so keep that in mind. This is always based on the information that we currently actually have. Now we can say for certain that Helena can actually use the magic of other characters, which means that she can use the magic of every single character on this list. She has to turn into them first though, and it seemed like she actually needs to have an understanding of that power. Um, that is something that you can argue would knock this down into A rank. The fact that it seems like she needs to have an understanding. And the reason I say we kind of know this is because... Um, Oh, actually, I, I don't remember if that was actually just from um, a piece of fanfic that I wrote, uh, I, I saw. Never mind. Um, it just seems like the, the when she turns into something, she uses her own uh, idea of what it is she turns into. So, 
I'm not quite certain she can just like see Homura for the very first time turning Homura and immediately use time stop. I don't think she can do that. Um, but if she were friends with Homura, she could probably do that. Like if, especially if Homura actually took her uh, and showed her how time stop worked, I think she could probably maybe do it. As such, this is extremely powerful. Moving on with Liz is... Um, I'm sorry guys, the thing with Tired Magica characters is um, is that they just do whatever the fuck they want uh, and so I, I, I last time I, I think I put this in S, I'm not quite sure, or I at least wanted to put this in S because it seems like she can kind of do anything but I'm really, once again, not comfortable with powers that can just do whatever the fuck the writer says. So uh, the, basically this ability is, is that she can control shadows and she can meld into a shadow and sort of enter a shadow realm that lives outside of reality like a different dimension she can pull all sort of sorts of weapons out of it she can pull enemies into it she can pull friends with into it and make them un intangible and stuff like that so it seems extremely powerful like s rank the only reason i'm not putting into s rank is because like i said the fuck are the limits? What, what can it do? What can it not do? I, I just don't like it. You know what? I know people are going to be angry about this and going to write me angry comments, blah, 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 blah. You said you put it in, put it in S, whatever. I'm just not happy about it. So we move on with Susan. It's the same deal. I'm going to put her in A rank though. So the thing is, the idea behind Susan is that her ability is that when she kills a witch or an enemy, she is able to absorb the magic. It's basically the Highlander, absorb their magic and then use it for herself. However, it says that she can only use the uh, like one set of magic. So she, can, if she defeats ten enemies, she can decide which one of the magic she wants to keep. So she can only only ever use one type of magic, but she could potentially switch switch between them. Um, if she kills another enemy, she can then take on their magic if she wanted to and discard her other magic. That's at least what it says on the tin. But what we actually see her do, both in her uh, manga, but more importantly in Magia Record, is that it seems she can kind of fucking do whatever she wants. This is the thing about manga, because in manga it always seems like the writer just decides that a character can do that. Uh, and we see that in the event as well. The writer just decided she goes invisible now, and the writer just decided no one else can detect her. She's also super duper fast, faster than anyone else. She can also shoot fire and make people burn and stuff like that. Like, she can somehow do everything, but is supposed to not actually be able to do anything. So, I'm going to rank her based on what she's supposed to be able to do, not on what she actually does, because it makes no sense. We've gone with Tard. Um, Tart I am actually going to put into unranked because with Liz we at least see her do some really cool stuff that we can rank her on but with Tart we don't actually know exactly what her power is. In, on the wiki it says her power is light and that's it, just light. She can light. We know that she has extremely high um, capacity for magic that she can use. She can like uh, use way more magic than anyone else can in like one attack. She can like basically drop nukes. But apart from that, I know some people are going to once again tell me in the comments below how she has all these different abilities. But I'm just going to put an unranked and move on because... We also have Aimee Eri next. So what is Aimee's power? Uh, she has guns, but like I said, they don't really matter. Her actual power is the ability to predict someone else's behavior. She uses against Will Poirier to predict that she's going to attack. It is almost worded like she can see the future, but according to Magia Archive, and I think in this case I am going to give it to Magia Archive, that she can predict a, specifically a behavior of others, mostly because it just makes sense with her wish, because her wish was specifically to know uh, the behavior of another character so it would make sense that her ability is to be the ability to predict behavior uh, this is another ability that i'm going to put into a, the similar way of uh, into a similar uh, cast uh, or tier rather where i put himika's magic himika's magic was just temp being able to basically avoid one enemy attack by using this magic and it feels like this magic is the kind of the same where if you use this magic on your opponent you're going to be able to dodge the, the next enemy's attack but it does seem like uh, I mean needs to specifically use this power and the reason I say this is because she only used it once in the entire story um, in the entire fight even 
and you, I know you people are saying, well, of course you only used it once because every character was supposed to get their moment where they used their power once and then move on to the next character. But there was nothing stopping uh, Aimee uh, from saying, I'm going to keep predicting and keeping you updated. Something like that. They, they, she could have just made that comment and then moved on to the next character. But it did seem, uh, like, especially with other characters saying, like, wait a second, is that your magic that you just used? It does seem like it's something that she um, cannot just keep up all the time and she has to specifically uh, have it active during a specific moment. And because of that, it's a lot lower than it could be because otherwise this would be a power that could be really, really high in the list. But with that caveat, it gets knocked down quite a lot because if you don't have this active at the right moment where it actually makes sense to predict an opponent's very special um, ability coming into, act uh, coming, uh, into effect, for example, it would be too completely useless. Uh, you can also say, for, you could say this is good for utility to know what other people are doing. But once again, if you don't know what people are thinking all the time and only in very specific situations, can lead to problems. So instead, not very good. Next up, we have Akira's power. Akira's power is to know where the weak points of enemies are. I'm going to give the uh, same reason that I gave last time I made this list. If a character is really smart, they will probably have a really good idea where enemy weak points are just by watching the enemy. And therefore, this is a power that can be substituted by something that isn't even magic. Therefore, I don't see any reason why I should put this higher than the lowest rank if just a smart person can do the same. <sighs> Next up, we have Asuka, who I almost want to put in unranked because it's also a power that very much clearly lacks in um, defin in like a hand, uh, like an actual solid definition of what it can or cannot do. The, the, the definition that Asuka herself gives is. She sets up a rule and then her opponent or whatever she uses it on has to follow that rule. But she can only use it uh, on what it seems like one opponent, but more importantly, she can only have one rule active at a time. So she can say, the rule is now that you don't move. And then you have to follow that rule. Um, but it seems like some of those rules might be a sort of mon monkey paw style, which says, oh, you can't, you're not allowed to move. Uh, and then if your opponent is able to attack without moving, like for example, they have a sort of magic that they can use without moving their limbs, for example, that wouldn't be that great if they could still attack you like that. Um, but of course it would be an easier target. And on the same uh, page, we also don't know where the limits are. Can she just say, uh, the rule is your heart stops? Uh, that's, I will be insanely powerful, um, but it also, I also need to mention this because I'm also, also going to bring up uh, the fact that a lot of these powers were used against Walpurgisnacht, and you can say, oh, if it works against Walpurgisnacht, the strongest witch that ever existed, then definitely it must be insanely powerful, right? But multiple things. First off, uh, Madokami buffed them. So first off, they're all buffed by Madokami, by Madokami uh, and we're in top shape. That's already uh, something that puts them above their usual level. Next up, they were buffed by other buffs. Uh, we have Momoko and um, the Julia Natsuki was also buffing them. So they were multi-buffed. They had multiple buffs stacked on top of them. That is not actually part of their ability usually to have these buffs active. And furthermore, they had to use multiple of the same character kind of uh, ability to actually be able to do what they want. So, for example, they wanted to make Walpurgisnacht go to a different location. They needed like six or seven different characters using a similar power in order to actually make that happen. It's not that one character came and said, I want to make my, I'm going to use my power to make you go to the other location and then it just worked. It, had, it took like so many characters and all of these characters had multiple buffs on them. So I don't think it's uh, that easy to just say, well, she was able to stop what pulls up with that, therefore it must be insanely powerful, broken. Uh, no. With multiple buffs and with multiple characters doing the same thing, uh, I, I, I'm not going to actually uh, honor that idea that it must be insanely powerful because of that. But with that out of the way, um, in general, being able to tell someone else what to do, uh, even if it's just one one uh, target and just one thing is still pretty darn powerful to be uh, it can make a lot of fights very trivial um if you can just make them uh, like completely stop attacking that's probably the better uh, rule to give your opponent to completely stop attacking uh, and then have that active for a longer period of time while you fight them that's really really good uh, and also 
this is really good for utility when you can just tell someone what to do uh, and they have to at least follow that specific uh, order. That's really, really good. If you want to steal someone something, just tell someone that they should let you have it. <laughs> nice. Next up, we have Ayaka. Ayaka is very, very similar in that her power can sort of maybe do anything, but maybe not. I want to put it in the same tier because it kind of does something very similar to uh, what uh, Azuka does. Azuka says, I give you a rule, you have to follow that rule. While uh, Ayaka says, it does sort of like something similar but the opposite approach, where whatever the opponent does, you can say, that's a joke. And then it becomes a joke and it basically loses all of its effect. Uh, so while Azuka prohibits someone from taking a prohibit, uh, different action or makes them take a different action, Ayaka instead uh, like nullifies that action by saying it's a joke. Uh, this is a power that some people have said, oh, it must be in broken tier, because what if she says the fabric of space-time <laughs> is a joke? I don't think it works quite that well. I don't think Ayaka can just say, I think the flow of time is a joke, and then time just suddenly stops flowing and she becomes a god. I do think it has limits. I do think it has very big limits. She herself says, for example, as a limit, that it can't be used to revert injury. So it seems like if something has already taken damage, uh, or, for, or rather the effect of something has already uh, felt, been felt, um, then it cannot be reverted anymore. It doesn't reverse causality, um, but rather it prohibits causality from taking effect in the first place. So if an attack were to come at uh, Shizuku, then she could say, no, that attack is a joke, and then the injury wouldn't even happen in the first place. But once it happened, it has happened. So I don't think that she could use her power to revert something that has happened. She could pre prevent something from happening by saying it's a joke. So in, so it, I'm going to put it in a similar tier to uh, Azuka, but once again, you can probably argue that she could be a god if you wanted to argue that way. But I'm not going to argue that way. Moving on, we have Ayame, who has temporary, temp temporary invincibility for a few seconds. It sounds pretty awesome to be temporarily invincible for a few seconds, but if that's all you can do, that's not really anything. Especially if your opponent knows about this power, they can just stop attacking. First off, for utility, does nothing. Outside of combat, does nothing. Uh, next up, being able to take a lot of damage and still be alive is sort of a staple of magical girls. That's not really something that's special. Like if all these other magical girls still died as fast as normal humans would, then yeah, this power would be really good. But every single one of these characters could, could have like their entire body crushed as long as their soul champ survives. And if they have enough magic left or someone else is around, they can still be patched back up. So being able to survive really strong attacks it's okay, it's pretty good, but I still don't want to put this in any other higher tier other than the lowest tier. Because I guess because of all the uh, things that I've already mentioned. Moving on, we have our favorite, Emiri. Um, Emiri has a similarly ability to uh, me for you. I'm going to put this very close to me for you. Uh, like, like I said, by the way, I'm not doing the left to right, like left is stronger than right. But if you wanted to, I'm going to make some specific mentions, and I will specifically mention right here, is that we have some similarity to me for you in that, well, it says her power is charm. And it seems like, yeah, she has an unnaturally high charm when she talks to people. So it seems like she has a magic that is active kind of all the time, where even if she's not transformed, even if she's just talking to people, she has an unnatural charm to her, but you could also argue that she's just that charming. It's not actually magic. That said though, we do know that her power was able to basically fool the entire PMHQ into believing Mummy was there. In case you don't know about this, during the, uh, it was the Swimsuit Homura, one of the best events out there by the way, Swimsuit Homura event, it was revealed that Emery had used her power on Kyoko and I think Saika as well before, um, before the Valentine's event, because during Valentine, chronologically, uh, Mummy was currently still Holy Mummy and therefore wasn't home. But Sayaka wanted Kyoko to, to, and Sayaka and herself to still be happy during Valentine's. So she went to Emery and said, hey, can you make it so uh, we still believe that Mummy is still here with us and that we can like have a tea time with Mummy even though she's not there. So that's something that 
Emery was a way, was somehow able to do it. So it seems like she is able to influence other people's minds more than just having unnaturally high charm, but also going to some degree of illusion magic, some degree of mind control even. Um, but it seems, but it was a rather shallow effect like just believing another character is there is not that powerful of an effect and we don't know how much more she can do but even based on that it is pretty darn good moving on with hasuki hasuki's power is um i always wanted to put her next to nanaka i'm gonna just do that um hasuki's power is the ability to scan your opponents uh scanning your opponent basically means you uh just know their weak point. It's basically the same as Akira. It's slightly better than Akira because scanning your opponent means you know a lot more about them other than just their weak points. But even so, once again, this is something that a really, really smart person could probably also have a really good insight on. Just that it would require a bit more intelligence. It would require uh, an even smarter person to get the same information that Hasuki gets over what the information that... Um, Akira gets, but even so, they are rather similar, and therefore I'm going to put them in the same tier. We go with a girlfriend, we have Nanaka. Nanaka has the ability to know who your enemies are, and sadly, this is also another part, uh, uh, piece of magic that just doesn't do a whole lot. It is cool for, like, in, in battle, does nothing. You, if you're fighting someone, they're your enemy. Do you really need a power to tell you they're your enemy? does nothing. And switches, of course switches are your enemies. What does it do? Um, uniqueness, I guess you could also say that if you're extremely smart, you could also figure out who your enemies are. Um, but it gets a lot harder with this ability because it does require a lot of information you probably would never be able to figure out. Um, but I can see that it has some cool utility uses to know that no one can ever betray you. So this is what this power does. No one can ever betray you and you know immediately who you have to fight. But just that alone is not something that I would say is a power that I would like to have. I would pretty much rather have any of these other powers that are in rank C or above over that. Moving on, we have Hinano. If you are um, an anime only, or I guess you would say just in general, Hinano's power is Killer Queen! She can turn stuff into explosives, but to be more precise, if you are a manga reader, her power is Boku no Rhythm, or Kitekure. She can turn anything around her into chemical explosives. Damn. Um, for combat use, that is one of a really, really high tier power for combat use against both other characters and against monsters. It would have some utility uses to be able to destroy objects um, very efficiently. And if you've ever played a game where you are able to use explosives to destroy stuff, you will know how cool uh, how cool the utility is behind being able to just destroy stuff to get to where you want or just destroy stuff. I mean, I don't need to tell you how cool it is to destroy stuff for your, like, even just utility purposes. I like that. So that's really cool. The reason why I'm not going to put it any higher is, first off, it sucks for allies. If there's allies around you and you make stuff explode, that could be very, very dangerous. And secondly, it's kind of a one-trick pony kind of thing where you just it's just explosions and not really anything else. You don't tamper, tamper with the space-time continuum by doing something like this. So it's not anything more than that. We're going to have Kaku, who I'm going to put right next to Rina, who is very similar to Rina. She basically has the ability to copy any ability that she sees, which makes her very, very similar to Rina. She does mention that she cannot copy magic that has more capacity or more power than she has herself. She needs to actually be capable of using the uh, like the, the the same amount of the same amount of magic power. I guess you would say is how to put into words exactly what it is. Um, that the other character is using to make that happen. So I, for, I think I brought this up as last time as well. She could not just copy ultimate Madoka because she doesn't have that sort of match capacity. That said, um, similar reasons why it is all broken with Rina because she can copy anything else, anyone else's ability. And also some people have also brought it up, but could not could that not be a broken ability? Uh, could you not break it broken? But as I, I think I already mentioned this with Rina, if a character from the broken tier comes across and thinks, uh, Kako is someone who I don't like, or Kako thinks they're not someone, they're someone I don't like. Now, the broken character will probably immediately win before Kako has any chance of being able to do anything, especially because Kako needs to actually be able to see the ability before she can copy it. And these broken abilities, they don't allow you to see it and then still be alive to counter it. 
that's not how that works. So that sucks. Next up we have Kalko, who last time I think was D tier. I'm gonna put it in B tier this time. She has the ability to stitch stuff together. That I know, by the way, I know people have brought this up in the comments as well last video. I know she uses this against World Pokemon. I knew it back then as well, but I didn't bring it up because I'm not gonna say that, oh yeah, by the way, they're all gonna fight World Pokemon. That would have been a massive spoiler for the uh, North American game. And I went only on information that we had at the time. Um, so yeah, she can uh, basically stitch stuff together. It's very similarly, very similar to to Mummy's ribbons in that she can just create these giant lines of yarn um, that she can wrap around stuff and she can anchor it in the ground as well. And I guess I can already pick it up. Where's Where's Mummy? Yeah, I don't know where Mummy is. Mummy goes in the same spot. But yeah, this is an ability that you can use for a lot of utility and. Even in combat, even in combat, you can say it has a more utility purpose. Yeah, you can restrain someone, but you don't directly attack someone with this kind of power. Um, you can use it, for example, for mobility, like uh, like a grapple hook or whatever. You can use it to get around. It, I guess you can also jump everywhere, so that doesn't matter. But yeah, you can wrap stuff up. You can form other objects out of the uh, out of uh, what she's doing. However, in the case of Kanako, she's uh, more so using it to uh, stick stuff together. And I guess being able to stick any two things together by using some yarn is also really cool. So it's not something that's broken or overpowered or really gives you that great of an edge in most situations. But it's still a really nice power to have. In general, powers that are in B are powers that are really nice to have in quite a few situations. But also in a lot of other situations are just pretty meh. Um, so we are going to move on with Kauru. Kauru is once again for manga where they didn't actually give much in the, the way of what her power actually does. It just says she can also, very similar to Arisa, just in modify stuff. I think Arisa, Arisa modified her own body. I think Kauru just modifies objects or stuff in general, like reinforce stuff, basically give it an upgrade. Eh. Similarly with other powers we also know from the anime, Kyoko was able to, uh, and Mami as well, was able to touch an object. Mami was able to infuse a bat with magic. Uh, Kyoko was able to infuse like some glasses um, to look into the distance with um, with magic as well. So being able to infuse objects with magic to reinforce them or use them in other ways, Homura does this as well, uh, is not something that is special. So I don't, once again, this is one of those powers where probably other people can learn something similar as well. So maybe this would be something that would be more powerful if the manga actually explained it better, what it really does, but nah. So moving on, we now have Karin. Karin is cute, but also Karin has the ability to steal objects. And I need to mention very quickly as well, Karin has learned the ability to infuse objects uh, with magic in such a way that they explode on impact. And she, for example, can take a bunch of pebbles or candy, uh, fuses them with magic, and then throws them at an enemy, and when it comes into contact with an enemy, they explode and deals a whole bunch of damage, which is pretty powerful. However, that is learned magic. Anyone can learn that, probably, and therefore I will not talk about it, but I will talk about steel, and it basically already explained earlier what I think B tier is, and it pretty much applies to this as well. Being able to steal stuff magically is really cool in a lot of situations, but the main part that comes with this ability is that you need actually something you can steal. Against other magical girls, if you are able to use it on their soul gem, we don't know if this is always possible, it's possible that other characters either uh, either in such have like the soul gem hidden, like maybe they have multiple gems on their body, you don't know which is their soul gem, uh, if you can't notice it. Some characters have that. Um, or maybe some characters have the soul gem sort of interwoven into their costume in such a way that it's not just that easy to remove even with magic. It's hard to say, but if she could reliably steal every soul gem of any other character she came across, that would make her extremely broken against any other character. However, that's just one, one aspect. Against witches, it seems pretty useless against a lot of witches because it, you need to actually use it against a witch that has something you can steal. If it's a witch that has like a, a weapon, cool, you can steal a weapon, awesome. If it's a witch that doesn't actually wield a weapon, I think for example she's fighting against Gertrude, 
What's she gonna steal? The flower off her face? That's not gonna do anything. Uh, it's like extremely, extremely situational against witches and completely useless against most of them, almost all of them probably. Um, for utility, I guess it's really cool to be able to move objects around um, that well. But once again, if you are faced with any situation where there isn't an object you need to move close to you, it's completely useless, like 100%. So once again, cool in a lot of situations, useless in, in other situations, so eh, not that great. Next up we have Kazumi, who of course has the same ability uh, that uh, Kazusa has. Um, which we still don't know that much about other than she basically uses some very normal magic i almost want to say like if you think about magic and a wizard using magic what can they do they can like hide objects in their hat and they can like pull objects out of their hat cool she can do that yeah it's like a normal magic thing that uh, you would think a magician can do she can do that she can she has a staff that fires a beam of magic awesome cool uh, she can jump really high and move fast and all of these things are like things that everyone can do, so wh wh what is Kazumi or Mijiru's actual ability? I don't know, the wiki says like something like destruction. Cool. <laughs> Her ability is destruction. Did it actually say anything specific? Breaking commandments is also apparently one of her abilities. I don't know, this is... I can't rank this because it seems like whatever her actual ability is, she either didn't really use it enough, or it's nothing, or we just don't know. We probably just don't actually know what exactly her magic really is, because she really just does normal things that other characters can do as well. But I don't think not having any specific magic really is her magic. Moving on, we have a Kokoro, who has the ability to withstand uh, damage very easily it's it's almost exactly the same as ayame so whatever next up we have uh Hazuki. what is you know Hazuki? konoha what is konoha's power um konoha's power is the ability similarly to mifu to create illusions um at least it says that uh, it seems whenever she says that she uses a power in the story, which I think is like once or twice, just a bunch of mist appears. Uh, and it is mentioned that mist is part of her ability. She can probably just create a whole bunch of mist and then within the mist, illusions appear. Um, which sounds really awesome. It does sound similarly to me for you, just that it sort of tells other people like, hey, if you know that I use mists to create illusions and you see mist, you know I'm using illusions. So it kind of gives itself away. But if you don't know that, or just in general, apart from that, it is very similarly apparently to what me for you can do. We just don't know the very specifics uh, because she didn't reuse really it a whole lot. But given that it, it does seem to be the similar kind of magic, but it does give itself away, I will put it in the same tier, but I will make a mention that it would be lower than these two characters on the left. Moving on, we have Konomi, who can give flowers. Moving on, we have Madoka, who uh, we don't actually know the very specific ability that she can do. Um, and I will just go on based on what we know in the earliest timeline that we know of Madoka. This is not something that is in my record, but I guess in Maga record we know her connect heals, but in the earliest timeline we know that the original Madoka, who uh, the original Mura got saved by and did her wish for, she used her wish to heal a cat that got run over by a car, and so she was able to use healing magic. And there are other characters on this list that are going to be ha happening a way later uh, that are able to use healing magic, and I will go I'm going to make a case for healing magic. Uh, I'm going to make a case for why it's bad, and I know thought people are going to be really sad about this. The thing about healing magic is, first off, healing, uh, the character healing themselves is something that everyone can do. Every single magic girl can heal themselves, just not as efficiently as other characters. For example, uh, Sayaka can heal herself a lot more efficiently and faster than other characters can, but every character can heal themselves. She just does it a bit better uh, and faster. Also. Heals is something that doesn't win you fights, it just makes it so you don't lose as easily. So if you were to think about the tempo of a fight, uh, like the enemy pushing against you and you pushing against the enemy trying to get the upper hand, heals don't give you the upper hand. They just make it so you are able to withstand the enemy's push uh, more easily. 
as such, it's a power that doesn't give you the upper hand. It is more a supportive power uh, to use. Other characters can use it as well, just not as easily. And even when you think about healing other characters, I think it is also possible, I don't know exactly where it was, it was some spin-off or some interview that was um, from other materials, but I'm pretty certain that characters can learn to heal other characters as well, at least to some degree. I guess, yeah, we know that Kyoko in the anime did keep uh, Sayaka's corpse fresh uh, to some degree, so that was kind of a healing magic that she used. I mean, she used it on an object because Sayaka was dead, but it was still organic matter that she was able to basically heal. It is a bit roundabout, around the corner, but still you can argue that Kyoko was using healing magic on Sayaka's corpse. Therefore, we can probably assume that every character, if they are a veteran and they study it, could learn healing. As such, being able to heal other characters is also a magic that I would say is completely not unique at all. So it's not unique, it doesn't give you the upper hand. Other characters can learn it as well, for both themselves and other characters. It's purely supportive as well. I, healing is gonna go in lowest rank, I'm really sorry guys. I know you can make um, arguments for why it should be higher, but this is my list, simply as simply, simply that. And like I said, you can have your own uh, ideas on what it should or should not be, that's totally fine. I'm not going to uh, disagree or argue with you about that, because everyone has their own views, that's totally fine. We're going to have Manaka, who has the ability to turn uh, any sort of attack or magic into a bigger attack, a bigger magic, or you can increase the area of effect of abilities. Last time I didn't rank this very high, but I do think it's another one of those abilities that does have enough situations where it can be really awesome. If you're paired with someone, let's say for example with Kazumi, who uses laser beams, and you're able to increase the intensity of the laser beam, make it bigger, make it hit multiple targets as at once, that is really, really awesome. And can be completely game winning or match winning, fight winning, whatever, battle winning, whatever, combat winning. That is really, really good. However, outside of combat, utility does nothing. Utility is zero, sadly. Um, she said she used this power to spread the word about her restroom, but that was her wish to some degree. That wasn't actually her using her normal magic, that was a wish. That's different. Um, against witches or against other characters, um, it's kind of the same, it really just depends on what you're increasing. But sadly, that also means that you need to actually have someone else around who has a strong attack that you can increase. If you have someone nearby with a strong attack that you can increase, really, really awesome, really cool ability, nice, awesome. If you don't, completely useless, throw in the trash. So that is why I'm going to put this one in B, highly situational, but can be really awesome. Next up, we have Masara, who has the ability to become true in, truly invisible. I'm going to make a distinction here between true invisibility and perceptional invisibility, uh, because it's going to come up later as well. The difference is that um, true invisibility means light passes through your body. That is what Masara can do. Light passes through her body when she uses it. Um, as such, it's really, really cool for utility, amazing for utility, amazing in any battle where enemies can't attack you. The big problem with this magic and why this is not higher is that anyone who can detect her or if they know she's somewhere in the area, use area of effect abilities maybe, or just attack everything around them. If any of these is true, this magic becomes a lot worse and almost useless. If someone can magically detect her, it's completely useless to have this power. So as such, I would almost, this is almost an A, I think last time it was even an A, this is almost A, but because it can be so horrifically countered, I'm going to put it in B. Uh, next up we have Mayu, who has the ability, by the way, this video is going to be long, long, uh, longer than the other one because we have so many more characters this time. Next up we have Mayu, who has the ability to stop someone else's uh, attacks, um, like a back off. And we're going to just very quickly put this right next to Himika because it's almost exactly the same. You just stop someone's attack by very quickly doing like a snap of a finger and they stop their attack and then it seems like they continue afterwards. Even with all the buffs, she was only able to just very quickly uh, stop uh, well, Pokestop for only a very tiny moment, so it doesn't seem to be... Uh, having that long of an effect timer on it. Next up, we have Mayoi, who has the ability to 
transform other people's perception of reality. And I said at the very beginning of this, or close to the beginning, that if you're going to fool someone, you can't just show them uh, an illusion and hope they get tricked by it. Uh, if you want it to be truly effective, you have to invade other people's minds and tinker with their mind. Because if you mess completely with their heads, they cannot break through it, at least in theory. And, uh, not, and I'm going to prove this theory by just saying, Susone is basically an ant, is trained, or not trained, but she has spent her entire magical girl life hunting other magical girls, countering the abilities of other magical girls. She is the one who you would say is going to break through other characters' magics because that's her job. She is an assassin, so she has to break through other characters' magics. And even she got 100% completely fooled without having a single clue what happened. Even after everything had happened, she had no idea what happened. So Mayu's ability is the ability to tinker with everyone's heads around her and make them believe whatever it is Mayu wants them to believe. Which is so incredibly goddamn broken to be able to directly tinker with other people's heads. Not, and I, keep, I, keep, I need to mention this again, not just by showing them something and hope they get tricked by it, but actually tinkering with other people's heads and changing their perception of reality. That is so goddamn broken that it can only be in the highest tier. That said, uh, it's definitely weaker than Homura, uh, Homura's magics, uh, but even so, it is the same tier of magic and just completely ridiculously broken. Uh, I know I know there was the Nanoha event. I need to make a mention of the Nanoha event because I do have the Nanohas coming up soon. Um, I'm not going to count the Nanoha event as canon, Simply because it would mean that it is canon that the dimensions of Nanoha and Punamagi Madoka Maika are linked, which is weird. But also because it would mean that it's canon that for some reason 90% of the cast just suddenly drops against opponents that are a lot weaker. Like, that story was so full of contrivances and was just so badly written and had strong characters suddenly lose and then weak characters suddenly win against the strongest characters. It was I'm not going to count that as canon because if I count Nano as, um, as canon, this entire tier list makes no sense and I would have removed every single... If, if Nano as is canon, Momoko is, uh, and Rena are highest tier broken. So no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. Um, so yeah, moving on though, we have Mitama, and the Mita, I know that the wiki has different information on Mitama. I say that Mitama's power is the ability to uh, cause internal corruption and internal damage to anything she touches and cause decay and death. The reason why the, uh, a lot of people and also why the wiki have different information is just simply that there is some conflicting information in the game itself. At multiple times, we do see that Mitama says that her abilities that she got when she was a magical girl were not uh, the abilities that she has now and that they were uh, abilities of death. That they were abilities that caused corruption, um, something like that. They were abilities that were tied to death in some reason and that were, they were destructive in nature. She describes her initial magic as what I described her initial magic as. But then later on when we see her start fighting, we suddenly talk, have her talk about uh, saying, I'm using my magic now to be destructive. I learned how to do that. And there's just nothing I can say about that other than the story just contradicts itself. It says on one beat, my magic was the magic of death and it was destructive. And then in the next beat it says, I learned how to use my magic to cause damage. It makes no fucking sense whatsoever. So... It kind of depends on what you go with. Do you say, her, oh, it was right what she said first, that her initial magic is, is corruption, or you say, no, it, it's true what she says later, and her uh, ability is, and that's what the wiki says, the ability to reach into people's souls. Uh, and she was able to use that to learn adjustment. And these are basically the two realities. Both of these things could true, because like I said, the story contradicts itself. That said, I'm going to... Um, do, uh, do it based on the ability that she has uh, shown, in my opinion, to be her true magic, which is the magic of corrupting whatever she touches. It is a magic that has extreme power to of destruction, but because of all the caveats it comes with, most notably, she has to be close range to it and actually have the magic take effect. That is such a huge caveat uh, that it, it gets just knocked down to see. Uh, because you can argue, oh, but if she has a lot of time, she can destroy almost anything. Yeah, these are magical girls, they have magical weapons. If you give them a lot of time, they can destroy almost everything. That's not something that's special. 
Um, so that's why I'm not going to put her that high. And we know her magic takes time to take effect because her Doppel and Magia don't deal immediate damage, but they give a shit ton of extremely powerful damage over time effects. So we know that's how her magic works. <sighs> Moving on, we have Natsuko. You can buff people. It's the same with buffing over here. Uh, it's almost the same as Mogus power. We have Elisa. I couldn't figure out what her power was. Her power, I think it says in the... Um, on the wiki that a power is acceptance or something like that. I, I'm not, I, I can't rank that. I, I can't rank the power of accept. How do they rank dignity? Next up we have a Nemo Hiragi who has the power to manifest energy into physical objects. This is the topmost of S rank that you can get. The reason why I'm not going to put this in a broken tier is because uh, I said earlier that one of the criteria of a broken tier is that there is no counter to it. And there is a counter to Nemo creating stuff to destroy it. Uh, if you have extreme amounts of damage potential, you can just destroy whatever it is Nemo creates. And that's all, I mean, it is really hard to actually have that amount of destructive power, but you can have it. Also, it seems like Nemu uh, has to create something next to her first, and then that whatever she, it is she creates, that thing then attacks. So there is a bit of a process to it. It takes time. Even if that time is just a few seconds, which isn't that much, those few seconds would already be enough to have someone who is in Broken Tear to immediately dismantle and completely destroy her. So because of those reasons, I'm not going to put it in Broken Tear, but the ability to create almost anything you want uh, using your magic out of thin air, holy shit, that's powerful. Um, I know also some people might say, but you can create something that could, like some sort of object or uh, rumor that could uh, kill, well, Pokémon's not immediately. Not quite that simple because we do know that using this power uh, uses not just magic that you use, but kind of your life force. What's the difference between magic and life force when magic is based on your soul? Oh, I don't, don't ask me that. This is one of those things that maybe we'll never get answered because we assumed that a uh, character's soul was their life force and magic is using their life force. That's why when their uh, soul gem gets empty, they get all distressed and die. Um, don't ask me the questions like that. What the difference is between life, form, uh, life force and their soul magic power? But we do know it takes that and therefore it does have this big caveat as well. The Nanohas get unranked because I don't I don't I, I don't know. I have seen the first two Nanohas movies, and I got bored. I'm really sorry. I, I didn't like the Nanohas. I feel like they just they just make stuff explode. And I guess if you want to say, oh, but they can destroy cities in one giant laser beam, that's that's cool. That's cool. But how does it compare to, for example, Asuka giving them the rule you cannot fire lasers? How does it compare to Mifuyu using an illusion? How does it compare to the Nays just playing their instruments? How does it compare to any of these other abilities? I have absolutely no idea. Um, like I said, we, it's extremely difficult to impossible to actually call the Nanoha event canon in any way. So I was going to keep them on unranked and keep it at that because we just have no idea how their powers are supposed to interact with any of these other powers or how they even interact with witches. We don't know at all. Moving on, we have Salami. So uh, Peter Bread has the following ability. Her ability is uh, the ability to hide something from someone's sight, um, which is very similar to an illusion, but notably worse. It is similar to Illusion, but the lower tier of Illusion. Uh, it gives someone like a blind spot in a very specific um, way, and you can say this is very similarly to uh, making uh, yourself invisible. Instead, you make something else invisible to some degree. So you have to think a bit around corners, but it is very closely linked to invisibility. Therefore, I'm going to put it in the same tier. Moving on, we have uh, our favorite uh, lesbian. Uh, we have Rika. So Rika's power is the following. Uh, she is basically able to make someone change their mind about something, which is on the very first, in the very first second, almost sounds uh, like it would be next to Himika because it does sound like, oh, you can just stop someone's attack with that. But the reason why I'm going to put it higher than that in the next tier is because you can't, it's not just for stopping someone's attack by making them uh, say, uh, making them think, actually, I don't want to attack and make them change their mind. 
uh, but this is a power that actually has a lot of utility uses because outside of combat you can just use this on other people to basically manipulate people quite a lot which makes it quite good uh, and also it is able to uh, direct the flow of combat however being able to make uh, have other people change their mind about something even or have witches change their mind about something you need to change their mind to something new um it is and you need to like keep doing this over and over and over uh, to whatever your opponent wants to do makes it a power that needs to be used quite often and does have its lim lim uh, limits which is why it's not higher than this um because if this was even if this was a lot stronger you could Put this next to a few illusions but it seems to be weaker than that but stronger than just temporary uh, temporarily distracting someone next up we have sasara who has the ability to taunt someone this is the top most of d tier that i'm gonna give it by the way and this is the top that is the lowest most of d tier uh, this top most of d tier she, being able to taunt opponents to such a degree that they are forced to attack you is terrible if you are outclassed if you use this against an enemy who is stronger than you it's one of the worst abilities you can possibly ever use because it's immediate suicide however if you are fighting in a team and the rest of your team can't deal with enemies that easily then this power is really good however that's a very specific scenario and so not only does it is it suicide against probably quite a few opponents it also is only really that awesome in very very specific situations where you absolutely need to draw uh, uh, your opponent's attention to you I, I would almost put this in c almost but just barely i'm going to put it in d but at the very top of it if that makes you any more happy why doesn't there we go no come on oh my god next up we have shizuku shizuku has the following ability she can be broken she, uh, shizuku can open a gateway from your current location to any location on the entire planet and she can teleport herself instantly with other characters or other people she has to like open the pick uh, the gateway and then they have like sort of move through it but i don't know if i need to go too much in in depth why the ability to globally teleport instantly to any location on the planet is broken tier for all of the criteria that i've said with uniqueness with out of combat utility holy shit i would give my life for being able to teleport that doesn't make sense i can't use it when i'm dead i would give almost anything for the ability to teleport for the because the utility to completely erase travel uh, in any way shape or form just be absolutely absurd uh, for fighting against witches for fighting against other characters it's just so absurd to be able to teleport anywhere holy shit especially if she can telefrag we don't know if she can telefrag but if she can telefrag holy shit and if you've never played quake and you don't know what telefrag is telefrag is when you teleport into a location that is already occupied by something and then whatever it is that you uh, are teleporting into then explodes into a million pieces if that is how if that is something she could do she probably has never tried to teleport inside someone but if that's something that works if she can telefrag that would mean that she could instantly kill pretty much anything uh, which is absolutely absurd even if she can't telefrag against other characters she could teleport her weapon right next to like one nanometer in front of their soul gem which instantly kills anyone um okay not instantly it might take a nanosecond like it kills anyone in a nanosecond if she instantly teleports her weapon one nanometer in front of your soul gem that's that's uncounterable in my opinion um and even apart from that if you have an opponent where she is able to either trick them into walking through a gateway or she can make someone fall through a gateway i said earlier uh, not earlier in another video that what she could maybe open up a gateway below someone's feet that just leads next to the earth's core and if they fall through close the gateway and <laughs> What are you gonna do about that? Not quite as uh, not. This can be counted to some degree by just jumping out and moving f away from it fast. But this is something that would probably be really good against witches because witches probably have no idea what the fuck is happening. If suddenly uh, there's just a hole and they go through the hole and suddenly they're on the UF score. Also, something to note is that when she opens a gateway, um, 
it does work both ways. So if she were to open it inside the Earth's core, then magma would shoot out the other side. So she could also uh, do something like this, where she would actually open a gateway to the Earth's core and have the other gateway like right next to the enemy. And then it just shoots molten magma onto the enemy from the Earth's core. There's so many ways on how absolutely absurd this sort of power is that I don't think I need to keep going on about how absolutely broken this ability actually is. Like just being able to temp like globally teleport instantly, just fucking end it right there. Next up we have Toka. Toka has the ability to convert one form of magic uh, or one form of energy into another form of energy uh, in the story she uses this to transform the impurities from soul gems that uh, we has harvested into uh, magical energy that nemu was then able to use so you can convert energy i can't rank this because it seems like all she really does is transformation which kind of depends on what the output is and it kind of depends on what the input is. It depends on how much you get as the input. It get it depends on how important the output is. How do you rank something like this? How do you rank being able to turn one type of magic into another type of magic when it seems like she can't like imit imitate another pe person's magic with this? She can't she doesn't do that. She just can give someone magic from someone else, I guess, maybe, but only if they give her the magic, it seems. This is one of those magic that, magic that is, it makes sense in context with what, it, what they are trying to do. But if you think about this, as you, when you just walk through your everyday life, what do you use it for? What do you do in your everyday life with this sort of magic? What do you do when you fight against witches like this? It, I don't know. I, I just don't know what you actually are supposed to do with this magic. If you have any cool ideas what you could do if you can transform one type of, one type of energy into another type of energy, um, like magical energy, tell me in the comments below. I don't know how to rank this. Moving on, we have Umikao, who uh, I, I knew what her ability was because she has the axe files. It's very similarly to basically to identifying an opponent, uh, opponent's weak point, so it goes right in here. Well, the funniest part is I looked this up on the wiki just to make sure that I didn't uh, think about this the wrong way. And the wiki just says her power is the ability to read and write. Good job, wiki. Um, but yeah, she basically just scans uh, enemies with the X files, which is a weapon, and that's pretty cool. Moving on with Ren. Ren has the ability to cleanse people's souls. I talked about this uh, in other videos as well. Uh, pretty much any video where Ren uh, appears in some way, I say that Ren has the ability to communicate with the dead in some way. She can speak to ghosts. We know that she can do that. Uh, we can. We know that she has some sort of a magic that is based on uh, the power of uh, the dead in her magia, the soul salvation, she is attacking with souls of the dead, she can do that. We also know that her ability that she used against Walpurgisnacht is the ability to cleanse the soul of Walpurgisnacht, which basically just means she erased the grief seed of Walpurgisnacht. Some people have asked, yeah, but what about the grief seed of Walpurgisnacht? Isn't it gonna come back then? Isn't the witch gonna come back? No, because Ren was there with salvation and, uh, or Nirvana actually, as that power is called, and she erases grief seeds. Um, I did posit that it was possible, maybe, that she could kill witches that way. The thing is, I knew that she was going to use it against Walpurgisnacht and that it didn't kill Walpurgisnacht, but I, it's Ren. I wanted to at least make it sound like she could do that because that would have been amazing. But no, if she erases a witch's grief seed, it doesn't immediately kill the, kill the witch, but the witch can never come back or recuperate in any way. So it's like killing their battery, but if they still have some charge left, they can still keep fighting. Um, as such, it is really cool to have power over the dead. I almost put this at unranked because how do you rank being able to basically be a spirit medium and an exorcist? But I'm gonna put it in B just because uh, I think that it is really weird to say that a power like this has really cool utility. But I do think being able to talk to dead people uh, or talk to ghosts and harness the power of the ghosts uh, I think that would count as really good utility in my opinion. She could go on TV as a spirit medium and actually talk to ghosts. I like those fake spirit mediums that you find everywhere. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna put that in here, right next to this character uh, right here uh, for no specific reason or whatsoever. Um, we then have Mummy, who I'm going to have to put right next to Kanoko if I find where I put her right there. Uh, because like I said earlier, it's basically almost the exact same ability. I know some people will say, but Mummy is really powerful. Yeah, she is powerful. 
but her ability isn't broken. Her ability is just ribbons. She can form ribbons into stuff. Some people will say, but uh, guns are part of her ribbons. I know she forms ribbons into guns, but we already know that every single character can summon their chosen weapon. She's just summoning them with style. I mean, she summons them from her hat as well. We know she just likes to use a bit of flourish, a bit of style. Um, so it's nothing special. And we know every character has a weapon. Therefore, I'm not going to count guns as a weapon. Just because then I would also have to count all the other characters' weapons. Uh, I'm not going to do that. As for the reasons I mentioned at the beginning of this. So just having the weapons, very similar to Kanako. Uh, and I'm going to move on with Mel. Mel... Uh, uh, it's really hard to say with Mel. I'm going to put her in unranked for now. The thing is, she can kind of see the future to some degree with her cards. And it says whatever she sees in her cards is going to come, uh, come true. But it seems like they're all just self-fulfilling prophecies. And having the ability to make up and then see through self-fulfilling prophecies is pretty darn useless and almost a D tier power. However, I don't think it was ever truly explained if maybe it was actually possible to plan around the self fulfilling prophecies in such a way that you can abuse them for your own good and actually come out better in the end. As such, I'm going to put it in unranked for now, but self fulfilling prophecies, being able to just generate them, is absolutely terrible. It does nothing. Mito has the power to connect people's hearts. It's one step above buffing magic. Buffing magic makes everyone stronger, but being able to connect people's hearts, what this basically does is it makes everyone around you fight in complete unison. They, everyone suddenly knows other people's feelings, emotions. They know what other people are capable of. They know their powers. Um, they have a good, under, a good basic understanding of everyone around them. It makes people into friends. If you weren't already friends with Mito, because how could you not be friends with possibly on the autism spectrum character like this, who is very, very cute. So as such, it is an, an advanced version of a buff. Uh, and since I put buffs in CG, I'm going to put her above that. Uh, and I'm going to leave it at that. Nagisa, we have no idea what Nagisa's magic actually is. She does, she actually attacks with bubbles that she blows out of a horn, but that's her weapon. What's her magic? We, I, I don't think we, just no. You can say, oh, maybe her magic has to do with sweets. She can maybe create candy. Or I, I don't think that's her magic at all. So who knows? Oriko goes right next to Mel because it's pretty much the same. I said last time that um, she should be like really, really low tier because seeing the future is absolutely pointless if you don't have the power to actually change the future. Since we don't know for certain if uh, or, or rather, more importantly, if you don't know for certain how well Oriko can actually use her powers to change the future, I'm going to put it in unranked, because everything depends on that. If she has complete control to change the future, that would make this a really good power. But if her future is going to come true anyway, that puts it in, that puts it in D rank. And I know some people are going to say, oh, but she was able to actually change the future in uh, Oriko Magica, because at the very end she accomplished her goal. And so when she accomplished her goal, the future she, she saw didn't actually happen, right? Therefore she was able to change the future. Not really, because we know that Homura is looping through time, and therefore it still happens, just in another timeline. So she wasn't actually able to change the future. If she actually wanted to change the future, she would accomplish her goal and kill Homura at the same time. And then it would, she would have changed the future. But just accomplishing a goal that doesn't actually change the future at all. So we don't actually know if she can change the future or if she just sees it and then it always happens. We don't know. Next up we have Freda who can heal people. Where's my healing? That's, it just heals people. She has cleansing flames. She's basically a phoenix uh, and she can use her flames to heal other characters. Uh, it's, it's just healing. Next up we have Rico who very similarly to um, Sasara has the ability to just make people come to her. Um, I'm gonna put it right next to that because it's almost the exact same ability uh, to just attract people. Um, next up, we have Rio, who has an ability that is purely, purely for a very specific utility purpose, which is that she always has that she has the ability to just always get the perfect snapshot uh, of anything with her camera. So she always, whenever she picks a camera up and makes photos, it's always the best perfect photo. Um, 
Yeah, I, it's, it's, it's only good for one specific type of utility and completely useless in every single other uh, instance that you can possibly imagine it. So yeah, next up we have Saika, who goes in regeneration. It's really high on D tier, but I already talked earlier about healing and regeneration just goes in the same way. I know some characters are going to be, uh, not some characters, some people are going to be like, Look at the anime. Did you see what she did in the anime where she was able to regrow her entire arm instantly? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Do you know what's also pretty cool? Having a power that makes it so you don't have to regrow your arm. I, I know this, I, I'm not trying to hate on Sayaka. I like Sayaka as a character, but regeneration just is not that broken of a power because I, I, I already talked about heal, healing earlier. I'm not going to talk about the exact same stuff I went over, over it again. I'm just going to leave, I leave you with what I just said. Wouldn't it just be better if you had any other power that made it so you don't have to regrow an entire arm in the first place? Which would be preferably preferably better in every single instance. We're going with Sayoki. Sayoki has the ability to buff people. She just buffs people. She, I, I think what it actually says is in the Magia Archive, provide magic, provides magic to other characters. It's buffing, basically. Like, if you give other characters more magic, they can fight longer. It's kind of like a buff. So, yeah, that's just what she does. Moving on, we have uh, Seika, and Seika's power is, well, it almost made it seem like her power is to just summon fish, but she doesn't actually summon fish. There's like this bit of a, uh, I think it was part of her character description that says that she doesn't summon fish. Fish just randomly appear when she does her magia. It just happens. Um, so what her actual power is, is that she basically has a uh, catch the rainbow. And what that means is she can teleport between uh, different sources of water. So it says for Cloud as an example, she can teleport from puddle to puddle. I think in the fight against uh, Walpurgisnacht, they are using it to teleport between droplets of rain to get close to um, Walpurgisnacht. And it seems that she was able to take two other characters alongside her so she can use uh, that to teleport alongside with other characters. It almost sounds like, wait a second, that sounds rather similar to Shizuku to be able to teleport. But it is so incredibly limited to just water that it does get knocked down probably to B tier. Um, probably really high B tier, maybe low A, somewhere between high B, low A, I'm gonna put it in B tier, just because it's so extremely limited to just water um, that most of the cool things that I talked about with the teleportation in Shizuku just isn't possible. Um, especially, especially because we don't know the range. You can say, oh, but what if she can teleport? It's like she can grab someone and then teleport them into the Mariana Trench, then teleport back. Cool, but we don't know if she can actually do that. With Shizuku, we know that she has global range. We know she can teleport to any spot on the Earth. With Seika, we have no idea what her range actually is or if something like that is even possible. We're going to have Ui, who has the power to harvest energy. Harvest is an ability that, in this case, is works in this way that she gathers the impurities in other people's soul gems. That is how Doppling works, by the way. Only Ui uh, creates the Doppel system. A lot of people think Toka does the Doppel system. Toka has nothing to do with the Doppel system whatsoever. Um, Toka just forgot Ui, so Toka just assumed it was herself that did the Doppels. No, it's completely on Ui to do the Doppels uh, by removing impurities when someone is about to witch out. Toka was just supposed to sort of carry those impurities and turn them into magic instead, which failed horribly. So being able to just harvest energy means basically nothing if you don't have a use for it. And it seemed like in order to actually have a use for it, you need someone who can use that, which seemed not to be Ui herself. It's hard to say. Can she use the magic herself? Can she not use the magic herself? Uh, can she only use, uh, use this uh, ability to give impurities to others? Does it need to be Toka? to create uh, energy out of the impurities or otherwise they're just impurities and they're useless because why would you want to use impurities unless you're a void type characters because void type characters attack with impurities that's what makes them void type it's i i don't really know it's really hard to say because it's just an abstract content to uh, co concept to gather impurities because it all depends on what you actually do with them and we just have no idea how exactly you can use that. I know we, she gives those impurities uh, as energy 
to uh, Iroha and Yachio to attack with, but Toka was there to convert the energy. So it seemed to me like you need to have Toka to convert the energy, otherwise they're just impurities. We're gonna move on. I don't know why also Madoka is in there, she is broken, I mean she's just reality warp. I, she, I, I didn't even want to war, uh, rank her because I'm not ranking alternate characters, but I guess in that sense we could actually rank her because she's not just in Madoka ult, she actually has completely different abilities. But yeah, she's a reality warper to the highest degree, so of course she's the top of Broken Tier, um, next to her girlfriend. Ha, huh, amazing. Uh, we also have Yuma who heals. Uh, just heals. Uh, she creates shockwaves, but that's part of her magic, and uh, part of her weapon, I mean, uh, the shockwaves. Um, her actual magic really is just healing. Yeah, that's just there. We have Felicia, who has the ability to make someone forget something. Um, it's hard to say exactly how this could be used. Uh, it seems like you can't just make someone forget to breathe or forget to be alive. Um, so it seems to be only specific things that you can use this on, but this is also one of those abilities that is really hard to rank. I almost want to put this in unranked just because we don't know exactly what you can make people forget. I'm just going to assume um, that she can't use it on really important things, like I said, like forget to breathe or whatever. Um, they're going to put it into B. It has some utility uses if you can use this on people outside of combat. Once again, if you want to steal something, to make them forget about it. I also didn't mention this earlier about Mayu, but of course Mayu's ability is also broken for uh, utility as well. Uh, and also will say something. I, I know it's a long time that I've said this, uh, but yeah, okay, I'm going to make a mention on Konomi. People are going to be mad at me. Yeah, Konomi. Uh, there is this idea that, yeah, Konomi's magic is to, to, to just give flowers, and she does that in Valpogis Nacht Battle as well. But I've read this um, uh, theory that is actually based on a proverb and basically just means that Konomi buffs characters by giving them flowers, which if she can, if the flowers she gives people buffs them, it would put it up here. But I don't know, I've, it just says it gives flowers, so it's... Uh, Iroha, Iroha heals. I know some people are going to be like, wait a second, but she can heal soul gems. There's no reason to believe that other characters can't heal soul gems too. And there's also no reason to believe that other characters who can't heal as their normal magic also couldn't heal it. We just don't know. It's possible anyone could heal a soul gem if they like tried really hard. It's possible Mitama could learn to heal a soul gem uh, if she keeps training her magic. It's completely reasonable to assume that that is possible. Therefore, I'm not going to put it any higher. Also, also, how often does it happen that someone's soul gem cracks and doesn't immediately get destroyed? That happened only like once so far. Like Even on Kanae's soul gem, it cracked and immediately shattered, so there wouldn't have even been time to heal it. So, no. And then we have Sana, who I brought this up very, very early, uh, not very early, I brought this up at an earlier point, where Masada has true invisibility in that light passes through her, but Sana has perceptional invisibility in that light doesn't pass through her body, but everyone around Sana uh, has a blind spot in their head where Sana is. So in other people's heads, Sana doesn't exist anymore, and that is according to her wish. Her wish was to disappear, to not be seen by anyone anymore, so she's always there. Light doesn't pass through her body, but... Uh, and this is why I think it's actually way better than Masada's power, in that um, because it creates a blind spot like that, you couldn't, you, pr you wouldn't be able to hear her footsteps. With Masada, you probably could he hear her footsteps if you were really listening to it, um, but with Sana, you you do hear the footsteps, you always hear them. It's just that your brain doesn't actually register the footsteps. Um, you couldn't smell her, I guess. I, I, I'm sorry for you bring up smell because most people are really, really weird when it comes to smell. What the fuck? Um, but you just can't perceive her in any way. And I think that's why it's an improved version of an invisibility to be perceptively invisible other than having this uh, true invisibility of like, as the word invisible says, you're not visible because light passes through your body. Then we have Tsurano, who is unranked because it's one of those powers where the writers just say, well, it does that, it does this, blah, blah, blah. Basically, what uh, Tsurano's power is supposed to be is that you're supposed to be really, really lucky. And sometimes, when the writer says it's important, she's lucky. Uh, for example, she runs at what Pugis Nachman, when Pugis Nacht attacks, and she doesn't get by the building, and everyone says, wow, look at that, that's Tsurano's magic, she's lucky. What about all those other times when she gets absolutely destroyed? Uh, for example, the entire chapter 7, 
with um, the Chalation Land. That was some of the worst stuff any character has ever gone through. And Throne was supposed to be lucky. You can say, oh, she's lucky that she's uh, alive. She's, you, how is she lucky if she's even in this situation to begin with? So is, is the writer just completely forgot about Thurno apparently having good luck um, when all of chapter 7 happened. So I, I'm not going to rank this power whatsoever because it seems like her luck just happens or doesn't happen. Which makes it more so that the, the, the writers have the power. The writers have the luck, not Thurno. And the last character, because I know there are other characters down here, but I'm not going to rank these because they're not released yet or alternate characters. And um, the last one is Yachio. I bamboozled people last time because I said, oh, we don't know Yachio's power yet, but it's S rank. I was lying to everyone. I mean, of course, I knew Yachio's power already. Um, but also putting it on S rank was also bamboozled because her power isn't actually that good. Um, her power is the ability to carry forth the hope of your dead friends. When friends around Yachio die, Yachio gets a little bit stronger. So, if you actually want Yachio to use this power to the fullest, all her friends have to die. That is not a good power, if it requires your friends to die. And they also, for some reason, I don't know why they did that, they put this constraint on it, that it only that you can only make full use of that power um, once, and then it's gone. I don't know why they put that restraint on there. I, mean, I guess they don't want Yachio to be too strong whatsoever at all, at all but... I still don't want to put it in D rank because being able to get stronger when people around you die in a profession where people die all the time might make you really powerful at some point. It's just that requiring other people to die for the power, for the power to be effective, that's some notorious BIG stuff right there and I'm, I'm like, I, can't, I can't write that any higher than that. Um, if her power really was, other characters around her die for her sake, that would be slightly better actually for herself. Because now we know that she isn't invulnerable, now we know that she can die at any point. Um, at least with the survivor power that we thought she had, she was, she was at least invulnerable to some degree. So that's that. I'm actually done with the list at this point. Uh, I know there's a bunch of other characters down there, but like I said, alternate characters are characters that aren't released yet. Kyube is a shit, and apart from that, yeah. I hope you guys know there's some doubles by the way. I think Ikumi is down there for, again for some reason. For some reason Ikumi is twice on this. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hit that subscribe button. Thank you all so much for 1000 subscribers. I hope we will get uh, so much further with this channel to the highest reaches possible that a Mago Record channel could ever get to. Uh, I'll see you guys uh, in the next video. Hit that subscribe button. Click on favorite subscribe. Bye bye.